Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Make a Layout tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. A layout is a composition of one or more maps. It can include supporting elements such as a title, legend, and text. In this tutorial, we'll add a layout to our project, include layout elements such as a north arrow, scale bar, and an overview map, and export the layout as an image. You can follow the step-by-step -step instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. Start ArcGIS Pro and sign in if necessary. Open another project with ArcGIS Online and search for Make a Layout. The project opens with an active map view showing buildings in central Wellington, New Zealand. This will be the main map in our layout. The buildings are symbolized by the average yearly solar radiation they receive. Dark orange buildings get the most sun exposure, while the yellow buildings get the least. Open the region map view. This map contains an imagery base map of Wellington and the surrounding area. We'll use it later in the tutorial to add a small overview map to our layout. Open the layout portrait view. This layout includes the main map, an overview map, a title, and other elements. We'll make a second layout similar to this one, but with a landscape orientation. Open a new layout using the landscape letter template. In the layout properties, change the name from layout to layout landscape. Notice how the name changes in both the contents pane and the view tab above the ruler. Next, add guides to the layout. Guides are non-printing lines that help you align elements on the layout. Once you click OK, guides are added to the layout at one quarter inch from each margin. We'll also add horizontal guides one inch from the margin. You can right-click the ruler to add individual guides and then drag them anywhere you want on the layout. Drag one of the guides to the eight inch mark and add another at 8.25. Make sure to save the project. Next, we'll add the central Wellington map to the layout. In the Insert tab, in Map Frames, click on the central Wellington thumbnail. Then, draw a large rectangle on the layout. Drag the map frame to align with the guides and resize the map frame. In doing so, notice how you're changing the scale and extent of the map. You can make adjustments to the map rather than the layout when you activate the map frame. To do this, click Activate in the Layout tab. Once you move the map to the desired position, click Close Activation. We'll add a legend, north arrow, and scale bar to our layout. The legend explains the map's symbology, while the north arrow and scale bar provide geographic context. Click the legend dropdown. Here you'll see different legend formats. We'll go with legend 6. Draw a rectangle between the vertical guides at 8.25 and 10.75 inches. We can also change some of the default styling. For example, we can change how layer names appear. Open the properties for the parks element in the legend. Display the layer name and stop displaying the label. Select the legend item in the contents pane and uncheck show next to the title to get rid of the word legend. Let's add a north arrow and place it in the left corner of the layout. Next, we'll add the scale line one metric scale bar and resize it until the end value is one kilometer. Then snap the scale bar to the horizontal guide at 0.25 inches and save the project. Now we'll add a map title and descriptive text. Click the rectangle text tool to add a rectangle for our map title. Make the title Solar Radiation for Buildings in Central Wellington. In the text tab, bold the text and change the font size. Then align the text with the guides. We'll follow the same process, but this time we'll add a short description to help readers understand the map. Change the text symbol font and color. Below the legend, align the text with the guides on the layout and save the project. In addition to static text, you can also insert dynamic text. 
Dynamic text is linked to properties of the map or your computer's operating system and updates automatically when those properties change. We'll insert credits as the dynamic text. In the text element, the words Wellington City Council are dynamic. This information is a map property of the central Wellington map and is automatically updated on the layout if the property is changed. When the dynamic text is created, it becomes visible in the Contents and Element panes. In the Element pane, under Text, notice that the dynamic text is displayed as a tag. The rest of the text is static. You can see how the dynamic text is formatted by hovering over the tag or clicking the text view. In the text box, click in front of the word credits and type map authored by and then type your name. Press the Enter key to make a line break. In the Text Symbol tab, expand Appearance and change the size setting to 8 and the color to gray 50%. Click Apply. Let's create an overview map to give readers context on the location of our study area. Click on Map Frame and select the Region Thumbnail image. The map frame is added to the layout. Now that we have two map frames, let's rename them to Overview Map and Main Map to avoid any confusion. Click on the Overview Map in the Contents pane. We'll reshape it as a circle to add more visual interest. Drag the Overview Map to the upper right corner and resize it to meet your needs. We can show readers the extent of our main map by using an extent indicator. The default color is black, which is hard to see against the dark background. Click the map frame and in the symbol group, make the following changes. Set fill to no color, stroke to bright yellow, and width to two to help the extent indicator stand out more. You can activate the map frame for the overview map and zoom and pan to your desired extent. Notice how the extent indicator moves to stay centered on the extent of the main map. Click the Layout tab and close the activation. Select the Overview map in the Contents pane and add a border to help it stand out more. Change the Stroke color to gray 50% and Stroke Width to 1.5. Our legend and text boxes are already distributed fairly evenly, but we can make it more accurate. Press and hold the Shift key and select the legend and blocks of text. Right-click on any of the elements and click Distribute Vertically. Notice how the vertical spacing between the elements is now equal. When your layout is complete, you can export it from the Share tab. Accept the default location or browse to where you want to save the file and click Export. Once the export is complete, you can view the exported file at the bottom of the pane. For more detailed steps, Follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation linked in the description for this video.